For those of you going to the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous this coming January, I thought I'd give you some tips on when you arrive. For me, this was the hardest part, was just to know where to park, who to talk to, and feeling out my surroundings in the desert. And at that time, I hadn't parked in the desert before, so there are some things to look out for. And I'll show you in this video. First of all, you're in a desert, and this is a natural habitat for some wildlife, including coyotes and mice and snakes. Since it's the winter time, snakes are probably not going to be out, but if there is some consecutive hot days, they may sneak out of the ground out of hibernation. Um, another thing is there's the coyotes. So coyotes will um, come around camp if there's small animals and food left out. So be prepared if you do have a small animal that you keep um, an eye on uh, him or her to make sure that they're not, you know, a coyote's lunch. And the mice, there's these things called kangaroo rats and there might be some other types of rats and mice out in the desert, but they like to um, make nests in engines, and they also, if they smell food, they will try to get inside your vehicle and eat your food and nest in your vehicle. I have personally had this happen to me and it was a horrible experience. <sighs> Parking in the desert. So when you arrive, I looked up the map that um, Bob Wells has given us this year and it's the same as last year. Pretty easy um, directions to get there but once you arrive to the spot and you see all the campers out there and you're not sure oh is this the gathering or not there'll be a sign that says rubber tramp rendezvous and there'll be a couple different places where you can enter the camp. So there's these things called washes, and washes are um, when heavy rains come through the desert, the water disperses into these washes, and so they're most of the year dry. But during heavy rainfalls, they fill up. So you don't want to park in a wash. It's also um, uneven ground and kind of sandy and rocky so if you were to drive through it you might get stuck. I would just recommend not parking in a wash. Also that is where people will let their dogs go to the bathroom. That's where people will go to the bathroom and um, or dump their bathroom jugs. You might prefer not being around all that as it happens. There will be rocks, of course. It's kind of volcanic out there, the ground is, and um, cactus and shrubs. There's not a lot of vegetation out there. Uh, the cactus kind of are, um, are sneaky, I guess. They blend into the rocks a lot, but if you run over a cactus with your car tire, it, it might pop and so paying attention to the plants and uh, we don't want to crush the shrubs that are already there because it takes so much for them to survive and we don't want to ruin the habitat any more than we have to. Uh, the ground is really hard so digging cat holes is next to impossible especially if it's um, an emergency situation so having a backup way of um, using the restroom is recommended I heard there will be porta potties I am just hoping that there'll be enough for the amount of people that are there otherwise in two days they'll fill up and then we'll not have anywhere to go to the bathroom anymore unless you want to drive into town and go use um, like a gas station bathroom while you're driving into camp is you will see that people are lining the road well quote unquote the road into camp one of the things that people complain about at um, gatherings is that some um, individuals are inconsiderate about where they park 
because they might park very, very close to another camp and they haven't been, you know, kind of invited in or introduced themselves. When you are picking a spot to park, specifically at the RTR is um, what I'm going to refer to, it'll be close quarters. So everybody has to understand that if you don't want to be around a big group of people, then park at night somewhere else that it's entirely filled with BLM land. So you can go and park somewhere else, sleep, and then come back to camp during the day and find a temporary spot each day. Maybe make a friend with someone and say, can I just park here during the day and then I'll leave at night and go to my own place um, or go to another spot at night. So there's options. You're not glued to the spot that you find and you can't move. Um, when I first went there last year, I parked three different times. In the first hour I was there, I drove down to the end of one of the forks in the roads, went and talked to the guy next to me, decided I felt like I was encroaching on his space, so I drove out, found another spot, felt like it wasn't even enough for me, and then drove over and parked in a wash, which um, is not good, and I was told you shouldn't be parked in a wash because if it does rain, you're going to be washed away or sink into the gravelly sand. And it was true. It was difficult to kind of drive out of that spot because it was looser ground. But then I was invited into another camp. So I met friends and then I went and found a comfortable space to go park and everybody in the camp was like, yeah, sure, you can come park with us. That's great. And then we had like camp, we had our own campfire and we had meals together. And then we would go walk around and visit with other people. So it's not like a thousand people are going to all be in one camp all the time and parked in a giant circle. Everybody's going to section off and do their own little camps and form really close bonds with their camp. And then venture out during the day or at night or whenever they fail to meet other people. Basically the best way to be considerate in parking at the RTR is first to come in during the day so that you can see everybody and everybody can see you. Second is to find a spot that's not super super close to the people around you because they may have marked out that space for maybe their dog's quote-unquote yard to hang out in or um, they might be setting up a tent the next day and you park right where they're going to put their tent or they just have a bubble and they really want to keep that bubble intact and they were there parked before you. So third would be to um, once you do think you found a spot to get out and talk to the people closest to you because they also may say that um, somebody else has parked there and is coming back so you might have a really close neighbor or that there is someone like 300 yards away that has a generator that they run at night or in the early morning and they're warning you if you don't like to hear that noise or they'll tell you no that's a perfect spot We'd love to have you there. There's so many different things that could be brought up in just talking to the people closest to you. And you may form a camp with them or you may never talk to them again. It doesn't matter. Um, what matters is that everybody is being considerate of each other and it promotes, um, I think, a positive relationship. So these are the tips that I have for you. I hope uh, they are helpful. I hope that you agree with them. If you have any more tips, put them down in the comments. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya, RTR. <sighs>